before we begin, at a few points in the service, you'll see a countdown clock like this. Uh, if you're on the live stream at those points, we encourage you to use the comments at other points in the service. Just judge if your comment adds to the service or not. If you're on catch up when you see the countdown timer, you may want to skip ahead. Let's jump in. Good morning and welcome to church, wherever you are. Maybe you're in your pyjamas on the sofa. Maybe you're in your mask in church and maybe you're outside in your sunglasses. Wherever you are, it's good to be together. That's a weird phrase, isn't it? Wherever we are, we're together, but we are together in the presence of God to worship him this morning. Now, I wonder what you're taking with you on holiday this year. I'm not trying to be funny. Maybe you're just going on holiday in your back garden. Maybe the holiday that you'd hoped and planned for this year isn't happening. Or maybe you're finding yourself on holiday where you really didn't want to be. What do you need to take with you? I packed a few sort of essentials with the British weather. You just never know. On the other hand, you really do just never know. Um, Candish family always enjoy a little game of Uno. Flip flops. What else have I got in here? Oh, <clears throat> little plug for Simon Gillibo's family devotional. Good in the holidays, all the term time actually. Um, good to take, essential. Even if it's just to your back garden, why not spend this August? really spending some time listening to God, reading his word and hearing what he wants to say to you in this very challenging season. Oh, sun cream. We need sun cream, right? Maybe. What do you need when you go on holiday? What can you not do without when you go wherever it is that you're going? Why don't you chat to one another <laughs> and tell one another? What are your holiday essentials?
here are some things that you need to know. Uh, just a few things today. Uh, first is that the notice sheet still exists, and however, it's not in paper form, uh, but there are many things that don't make it um, into the video notices or onto the website that you can find in the notice sheet. And the way to get to the notice sheet is through the website. You can either go all the way to the bottom, and there's a little tab down there at the bottom that says notice sheet. Um, you can click on that. Or if you go to the top of the website, under the Sundays tab, um, there's a, a tab there that says notice sheet. Uh, you can also get to it generally through the Friday email that gets sent out. Now there's lots of information there, and so if you have a question about something, um, <clears throat> need a link for something, a phone number, whatever it might be, there's all sorts of details about things that are going on in the notice sheet. Brian. Now, um, over the month of August, we'll continue doing our services just in the way that we have been, um, where essentially um, at Holy Trinity at St. Andrews, uh, our services are primarily online, but there are people in, those, in the churches on Sunday um, joining together with what's happening online. Uh, in the villages uh, nearby in Moncton and in South Stoke, um, we've moved in the month of August to actually having uh, live services, just very simple uh, traditional services in both of those churches. Uh, so um, there's, there's limited um, spaces there, um, but that is happening at this point through August. We will be reviewing things for September, um, but regardless, we will continue to provide um, over this season. We will definitely continue to provide an online way of worshiping together, and we'll be looking to improve that as well as time goes on. Brian. La 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 big, big, big for his power Nothing's too insuancy for his care Nothing's too big, big, big for his power no Here we see Tigris domesticus, the household tiger, in its natural habitat. These animals can sleep for 12 to 16 hours a day, but don't let their fluffy exterior deceive you. They are extremely capable hunters. A young Dalmatian pup makes its way down the corridor. Suddenly, the tiger appears and pounces with alarming speed. During the hunt, these animals can reach up to 30 miles per hour. The pup stands no chance. Once the pup is caught, the tiger shows no mercy, quickly dispatching it with its razor-sharp teeth and claws. The pup is, in a word, stuffed. The household tiger can, however, exhibit a much softer side enjoying strokes and cuddles from its owner. They are particularly affectionate at dinner time. Now in church, we have to keep our face masks on, sadly, but it's time for all of us to take off that emotional mask, if you like, that we keep on sometimes. In church, we can't sing out loud, but in our homes we can. And even in church, we can worship God in spirit and in truth. 
we can use our bodies, we can mouth the words, we can just engage with him as we are. So let's pray. Lord, we invite you by your Holy Spirit, wherever we are, we, we come as we are. Lord, we want to meet with you this morning. Will you help us to worship you in spirit and in truth? Amen. Let's sing Hosanna. Praise is rising. Praise is rising. Turn to you, hope is stirring, hearts are yearning for you. We long for you, cause when we see you, we find strength to face the day in your presence. Come have your way, young boy. 
Well, Steve and Katie, it's been great to have you around Coombe Down for the last, uh, well, Steve, for you, I suppose it's less than a month, but for Katie for quite a long time. Steve, I know you've gone back to Chad this week already. Tell us what the next term's going to be for you and when you next think you'll be back with us in the village. Sure, thank you, Richard. Um, yes, by the time you see this, I should be back in Chad, uh, flying on Wednesday evening. And uh, for the next few months, I'll be busy um, working out uh, some of the logistical challenges that we're still facing with COVID-19 and uh, moving people around, trying to make sure we've got an engineer in place, making sure that we've got enough pilots in place, including myself. And uh, so I'm envisaging quite a busy season. We're getting a lot more requests now from the government and uh, from missionaries to help us uh, move them uh, from remote places to the city and vice versa. Uh, last week we flew some government officials as part of a COVID-19 response for the Chadian government. Um, I hope to be back uh, in the UK again uh, for Christmas, all being well, but as most of you know, uh, these are strange times and uh, we're not sure what the future holds but uh, we're supposed to take a break every six months or so and so I hope to be uh, back in the UK briefly um, at the end of the year. And Katie, you're not going back with Steve quite yet are you? Not just yet, no. I'll be around in the UK till about the end of August um, still living in the village for a couple more weeks uh, with Jack, Toby and Ethan and then hopefully heading up to my parents to um, finalise my shopping and packing of essentials before I head back to Chad. And your work for MAF yourself, uh, is it easier or harder from England? Um, it's a mixed bag. It's wonderful to have a reliable and fast internet. So meetings with people online um, have gone really well and that has been great. It is a bit harder to be away from the centre of the action in Chad. So gathering stories from that programme and from other programmes in Africa has been a bit harder but uh, praise God it has worked really well so far. So can you both give us a couple of prayer points uh, for the next term until we see you both again here? Sure well um, if you would be so kind as to pray for uh, the logistics and uh, for really us to be able to fulfill our mandate um, for the Chadian people. There are many isolated people in Chad uh, who for whom Covid-19 is just almost at the bottom of a long list of threats um, to their well-being and their life and we really want to be involved in that. And uh, if you could also be praying for Jack, Toby and Ethan in this next season we would really appreciate that. Um, Jack is going back to start his final year at university. Um, Toby is starting his gap year and moving to Gloucester and he needs to get a job and Ethan will be going into year 11 and has some um, studying to catch up on like most <laughs> school students when they go back so um, for them and that they would settle well once we've gone again that would be great thank you. Dear Heavenly Father thank you for each and every one of our church family and how we have been able to come together in as real a situation as has been possible. Freedom to worship you, pray together, learn from your word and receive encouragement, guidance, comfort and peace. We pray for those of us who recognize that we are struggling and those who don't yet acknowledge the struggle. People without work and job hunting, those trying to make ends meet financially, for those suffering with the mental challenge of separation and isolation, we pray for everyone who has missed key events with loved ones, for all the plans of celebration that have had to be curtailed, and for all who have had loved ones pass on and not been able to say proper goodbyes. We pray, Lord, for you to strengthen us, to persevere and find joy once more. We seek your wisdom to find our way again after the storm, and has pushed beyond comfort zones that we've established these past months. We're thankful for certain elements of this lockdown isolation. For many of us, making life more simple again, hearing nature over traffic, being able to re-establish home relationships lost in the hubbub of life. As the world tries to recover, please continue to protect our key frontline workers. There are more and more people putting themselves on the front line each and every day, particularly those in the hospitality industry trying to keep their businesses from going under. Father, we pray that we can avoid a second wave, 
perseverance with separation and use of masks so we do not have to return to further lockdown measures. Lord, help us to keep more grounded and not be afraid to step out again physically and spiritually and to be thoughtful, kind and caring to one another as we do. Please give us wisdom and strength through these times. Thank you for Stu who has been leading our youth group and all the other leaders working extremely hard to make Sunday so special and possible for us. Please help the leaders to find rest over the summer break and have fun and relaxing times with their families. We pray hope for what lies ahead in all levels of education. Please help those in positions of leadership as they lay out the path of the new academic year. And patience to wait for answers to questions that cannot yet be answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So earlier I was talking about holidays and how we perhaps haven't gone on the holiday we planned. But we've all travelled to a strange land this year, haven't we? We've all been in a very strange land. We've seen things we never thought we'd see, experienced things we never thought we'd experience. Um, we have experienced a kind of culture shock, I think. <laughs> it's uncomfortable. It's unnerving. Sometimes it's frightening. And sometimes it's enraging and sometimes it's worrying and sometimes it's exhausting. Just processing this different land that we're finding ourselves in, this changing territory that we're not familiar with. But you know, this strange land, this strange COVID land is not strange to God. He's been before us. He is guarding and guiding us all the way. So as we come into a longer period of, of sung worship now or mouthed worship if we're in church let's engage with him just as we are let's let him do what he wants to do holy spirit we welcome you we welcome you in this place wherever we are we welcome you don't be embarrassed to um before in front of your families or in front of the people who are two meters away from you in church let's just worship god in spirit and in truth How deep the Father's love for us How vast beyond all measure That He should give His only Son To make a wretch His treasure How great the pain of searing the Father turns his face away As wounds which mar the chosen one Bring many sons to glory The man upon a cross I sin upon his shoulders Ashamed I hear my mocking voice Call out among the scoffers It was my sin that held him until it was accomplished His dying breath has brought me life I know that it is finished I will not boast in anything No gifts, no power, no wisdom But I will boast in Jesus Christ His death and resurrection Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer But this I know within my heart His wounds have paid 
your love shining like the sun pouring like the rain raging like the storm refreshing me again whoa, whoa, whoa. I receive your love your grace frees me from the past it purges every sin it purifies my heart and heals me from within whoa, whoa, whoa. I receive your grace Your rain flood this thirsty soul Pour over me Your waves of love Pour over me I come and lay my burden down Gladly at your feet I am opening up my heart Make this joy complete Whoa, whoa, whoa. I receive your peace Your rain flood this thirsty soul Pour over me Your waves of love Pour over me Pour over me Pour over me Let your rain flood this Pour over me Your waves of love Pour over me Your grace is enough, more than I need At your word I will believe I wait for you, draw near again Let your spirit make me new I will fall in me, Jesus lights the way, by the power of your word, I am restored, I am redeemed, by your spirit I am free, and I will fall at your
Thank you for your faithful love to us. Thank you, Lord, that you go before us. You are guarding and guiding us all the way. Thank you, Lord. Will you open our hearts now to receive your word? In Jesus' name, Amen. Reading taken from 1 James, verse 2 to 12. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Believers in humble circumstances or to take pride in their high position. But the rich should take pride in their humiliation, since they will pass away like a wild flower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant. Its blossom falls and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich will fade away, even while they go about their business. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Before I begin, let's pray. Father, I ask uh, that you would take from what I've prepared and prayed over and thought over, and that you would help it to connect with the lives of people now that you would use this, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to take you into verses 2 through 4 of this chapter, and they're very connected to each other. Um, and uh, I want to start, of course, with verse 2, where it says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Like, okay, hold on. Pure joy. I could understand pure joy if it was something like when you love someone and they love you back. Pure joy, right? When you long and work for something that's good and it finally comes to pass. Pure joy. When you meet with people who understand you and you laugh into the night. Pure joy. But instead here we read, consider it pure joy when you face trials of many kinds. Like, what? <laughs> um, pure joy, consider it pure joy when you face trials. One of my um, commentaries that I, that I use gives a question for this section that stands out. Big bold print right at the top. Are Christians masochists? Um, which now at this point I expect that one of my children will turn to me and say, Dad, what's a masochist? 
Um, to which I'll say, do some drawing or um, listen to the guy on the TV. Uh, essentially, a masochist is someone that enjoys pain. That's not what we're after here. It's different. It isn't that Christians enjoy pain. It's that we have a bigger view of what that pain can accomplish, which I'll come back to. So pure joy whenever you face trials of many kinds. And I'm somewhat uncomfortable today preaching this passage in that I know people that are going through very significant trials. And I know sometimes the storm is so great that it's hard to cope. I take comfort from thinking that James, thinking about who James was writing this to. The James that wrote this isn't the James that we're familiar with in the Gospels with the disciples. In fact, that James has already been killed for his faith. The early church was scattered. The audience for this letter um, was familiar with trials of many kinds. I was, um, I, I, had, a, I had a teacher once who presented in a very academic way. And I was, um, his classes were so boring. And I was sitting in one of his classes and way too tired and falling asleep. And he sort of surprised me. I, I, again, I'm falling asleep. I, can't, I don't have the energy to pay attention. But I realized that what he was sharing about what it was like to be in the early church, I realized that it was really significant. He was talking about what it was like to be persecuted, to be poor, to need to flee, um, to, to save the life of your, yourself and your family, to flee the land that you are, the place that you are from, um, to head to some place where you might not know the language or have the means or the opportunity to provide. Um, in the middle of this class, I'm thinking, man, like pull some energy together. I need to pay attention. Like this is the best articulation of what the early church went through that I've ever heard. I should really wake up for this. And I looked up to realize that this man who had put in all this research as he was sharing this actually had streams of tears running down his face because he'd connected so much with what they were going through. They knew trials. James isn't making light of their trials. The goal here isn't that you don't feel the pain that comes your way or that somehow you enjoy the pain. Instead, it's that we get a bigger view of what that pain is accomplishing or can accomplish in us. Trials have the potential to strengthen us and mature us in ways that nothing else can. The potential is so great that we should call it pure joy. Now bear in mind the process of trials making us more, making us stronger and more mature is not automatic. Sometimes people talk like this, you know, every road on my journey has been good because it led me to you, you know. Um, no, uh, some of those roads were not good. Uh, you could have gotten here a lot earlier, yeah. Um, the process of becoming mature and complete is not an automatic one. And that's why we see in these verses, I mean, first I want you to see how these verses are linked, right? Um, at the beginning of verse 3, we get because. Um, so consider it pure joy when you face trials of many kinds because. And then in verse 4 in the middle, we also get so that. So these, are, these ideas are building on each other. And throughout this passage, we're challenged to a way of thinking that makes the most of our trials. And so in verse 2, we are to consider it pure joy. In verse 3, we are to know that this testing produces perseverance. And in verse 4, we must let perseverance finish its work. And so what it's producing in us is working in us, but at the same time, we need to let it work in us. And so we're joining with what we're experiencing and letting it change our lives. Now, so let me focus on these things. The idea that it can strengthen us and the idea that trials can mature us. So first, our trials can strengthen us. Verse 3, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. To me, perseverance is a great word here. Um, a person with perseverance has a, a deep strength that comes from being tested. There isn't a shortcut to having perseverance. 
the Greek word here for perseverance. Um, in King James, they translate it as patience, but I think that's a bit weak, really. Um, it's more active, it's a more forceful word than that. Uh, William Barclay explains that it is not the patience that passively endures that's being described here. Instead, he says, it's the quality that enables a person to stand on their feet facing the storm. Um, just thinking about this idea of perseverance, um, this is kind of a, I mean, this illustration might not communicate. It works for me. Um, but basically, um, Emmett Smith, he's a, a famous national, you know, NFL, National Football League over in the States. Um, so American football. And, um, but I hope this, this will make sense. You'll get the idea. Um, he has the world rushing record for the National Football League of 18,355 yards. Now, the thing that's significant to me is that actually he's about the same size and weight as I am. Okay, and the NFL, they got some really big people. And his job is essentially that when he gets handed the football, he is to rush into this massive wall of huge people and to force his way through. Now, that, I imagine you do that once, that would be a painful experience. Um, and on average, he would rush about 4.2 yards. And of course, you know, to go through that a few times or whatever, but he just kept getting up again and again and again and again and again to be able to have a record of 18,355. If he had given up early on, we wouldn't really know much of who he was. Um, there's something there of perseverance. Or there's an illustration I heard recently as well that I find really encouraging. And it's from the Journal of John Wesley. And um, you'll see just how surprising this is really. Um, check this out. So Sunday um, a.m. May 5th says, preached, at Saint, pre preached in St. Anne's was asked not to come back anymore. Now, by the way, that happens once. That would be difficult. May 5th, Sunday p.m. Preached at St. John's. Deacon said, get out and stay out. May 12th, Sunday a.m. Preached at St. Jude's. Can't go back there either. <laughs> Um, May 12th, Sunday p.m., preached at St. George's, kicked out again. Again? <laughs> like, May 19th, preach, preached at somebody else's. I don't know what that's about. Um, deacons called special meeting and said I couldn't return. May 19th, Sunday p.m., preached on the street, kicked off the street. May 26th, Sunday a.m., preached out in a meadow, chased out of meadow when a bull was turned loose during the service. Sunday a.m., June 2nd. I mean, you're getting a pattern here, right? Preached out at the edge of town, kicked off the highway. But then here's what I want you to catch. June 2nd, Sunday p.m., afternoon service. Preached in a pasture, 10,000 people came. What if John Wesley had given up too early? To experience that rejection would be incredibly painful. And yet, to do something great sometimes requires perseverance. We need a depth of strength that, that our trials can produce in us. And then notice what happens here in verse 4. Our trials can mature us. So in verse 4, we read this, Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. In the Christian life, you're called not only to salvation, but you're also called to maturity. In other words, your high aim in life should be that, you're mature, that you become mature, that who you are deep down honors God. And that as you, it's not like you just flip a light switch and you have salvation, you either have it or you don't, and that's all that matters. Instead, what's supposed to happen in the Christian life is that yes, Becoming a Christian, I guess, is like flipping a switch, but at the same time, you then grow in your faith. You grow in your maturity. You grow in your holiness in such a way that you are preparing for heaven. But trials, of course, sometimes reveal who we are deep down. Also, as we get older, hopefully we grow in self-knowledge, which can be discouraging. 
don't be discouraged, press on. The goal is that we become more mature and complete until the Lord takes us home. So when hard times come, your question should be directed to God and it should be this, Lord, how do you want to remake me through this? I am yours. Because I believe that trials have the potential to remake you in ways that nothing else can. To give you strength and depth and maturity in ways that nothing else can. Just in closing, first for some, there's the challenge here to see your trials as opportunities for growth. To turn what's negative into a positive, so positive that you can consider it pure joy. For others here, there's the challenge toward perseverance. What's the good thing that you're doing that, that you're tempted to, to stop or the, the good thing that you need to keep putting your hand toward? You might be tired, rejected. Don't trade God's call on your life for comfort or for something less. And finally, how can you be growing toward the goal of becoming mature and complete? What do you need to do today, this week, this month? to be making progress toward that goal. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you would help us in this, pray that you'd help me in this, that you'd help us, first of all, to have the right thinking in regard to what we go through. Father, that our trials wouldn't be things that, that destroy us, but instead would be things that make us stronger and more mature and complete. And I pray for people how this might apply to lots of people in lots of different ways. Pray that by your spirit, you would help them, that you would give them grace, that you would encourage them, that you'd build them up more and more for your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh man, thank you, Sean, for that great message. Let's take a few moments now just to uh, allow the Holy Spirit to let whatever it is he's saying to you personally just to percolate into your soul. Let's choose to say our yes to him this morning. A couple of weeks ago Peter Blair talked about the individual obedience of every Christian. Lord we choose to say yes where you are challenging us, we say yes. Where you are reassuring us, we choose to trust you. Where you are healing us, we receive your healing. Lord, have your way. In Jesus' name. I come to you, let my heart be changed, renewed, flowing from the grace that I found in you. Lord, I've come to know the weaknesses I see in me will be stripped away by the power of your love hold me close let your love surround me bring me near draw me to your side up like the eagles, I will soar with you 
Your spirit leads me on in the power of your love. Lord, unveil my eyes. Let me see you face to face. The knowledge of your love as you live in me. Lord, renew my mind as your will unfolds in my life, in living every day by the power of your love. Let your love surround me Bring me near Draw me to your side And as I wait I rise up like the eagles I will soar with you Your spirit leads me on the power of your love Lord I come to you let my heart be changed renewed flowing from the grace that I found I've come to know the weaknesses I see in me will be stripped away by the power of your love. Hold me close, let your love surround. to your side And as I wait I rise up like the eagle I will soar with you Your spirit leads me on In the power of your love Let your love surround me Bring me near Draw me to your side And as I wait I rise up like the eagles I will soar with you Your spirit leads me on So with you, your spirit leads me on in the power of your love. As we come to an end of our time of worship this morning, I'm going to say a Sabbath blessing over us. May this day bring Sabbath rest to our hearts and our homes. May God's image in us be restored and our imaginations in God be restored. May the gravity of material things be lightened and the relativity of time slow down. May we know grace to embrace our own finite smallness in the arms of God's infinite greatness and may God's word feed us and his spirit lead us through the trials we face 
with great joy into the week and the life to come. Amen. Go and enjoy the Zoom rooms. Thanks for being in church. Enjoy chatting with one another now and have a wonderful week.